So, if you remember last time, you know, we talked about this plastic <coughs> string. In a in a one-dimensional case, it's really easy to define, right? It's it's just that permanent part of the string, okay? But in an arbitrary deformation, so an, an, an now we're talking about not uniaxial stress, but for some very complex stress state, we want to be able to, we want to have something that we can sort of, that looks like a scalar or acts as one of those so-called internal state variables, okay? But we need to define it for a completely arbitrary stress state. And what we use for that is something called the equivalent plastic strain. <coughs> and so we use the same kind of symbol. It's, it's a scalar. But now we define it to be derived from tensor things. And typically, we define it in terms of the rate again. So the equivalent plastic strain rate is equal to 2 thirds times the plastic strain rate tensor. So two thirds E P dot two thirds E P dot I J E P dot. So these are tensor tensor. We contract them. That makes it a scalar. And then we have the two thirds there. And that two thirds appears for the same reason. If you remember last time when we defined the equivalent or the uh, effective stress, we wanted it to be the stress. You know, we defined it. We gave it a definition, and we and the definition is that it's the stress uh, that in the 1D case it's it's the yield stress, right? So it's that two thirds appears here for the very same reason. So that in the 1D case, this is in the uniaxial case, this is the plastic strain as we've been using. Okay. And so, so then the the actual plastic strain, you know, is the integral over time. Write it this way. From zero to some final time. Right. So we have to, to solve for the plastic strain, we have to let it evolve, right, in time. So this is our internal state variable. This is our history variable. If you remember when we first started all this discussion, the, the, the reason we need, need these guys is because we need to know where the stress has been, where the strain has been to define the stress-strain curve for plasticity. Right? And so if you, if you go up here and if we plug in our associated flow rule, right? so just remember EP dot is equal to and now I'm going to use that other definition, let's say lambda dot q, right? right? Partial f, partial sigma ij over the magnitude of f. Sij magnitude Sij. So q is a unit tensor pointing in the direction of deviatoric stress. Right. And if I so if I plug this guy in up here, right, so I'll just plug it in, two thirds, and then I get uh, lambda dot squared q i j q i j. Well, what do you think the contraction okay? If this was a unit vector, what would the magnitude be? One, right? Well, so based on that, I mean, we could work through the details, but based on that idea, if Q is a unit tensor, what do you think the contraction of a unit tensor is? 
it's it's one. Yeah, it's one. So so this goes to one, and then you have square root of two thirds lambda dot. <coughs> Okay, so this is the equivalent plastic strain. And what we use the equivalent plastic strain for, so now we're going to leave the assumption of perfect plasticity, and you know, we're going to say that the plastic part of the curve can actually be a function of the equivalent plastic strain. And so what that can produce is much more complex behavior in this region. So it could just be, say, linear hardening like that, but it, it could also be, what I was saying is, the response on this part of the curve could be a function of the equivalent plastic strain or parameterized by it. So you can have, in the simplest case, you know, the next, or the, the next more complex from perfect plasticity. So in the, the simplest case is perfect plasticity, you know, one tiny degree more complex would be a linear hardening model. And then you can go on to do all kinds of other complex things, such that you can have actually families of curves that are a function of the strain rate, plastic strain rate. This is actually quite typical of most materials including rocks, certainly most metals, the, the faster I load them, the harder they get. Uh, not, I say harder, the, the stronger they get. Right? So the, uh, typically for like a metal like a steel, uh, for every decade of strain rate, you know, so I'm talking like on a logarithmic scale, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, for every decade of strain rate, the strength of the material will increase by about 5%. That's typical of a, me of a steel, okay? So, so now we're going to use this equivalent plastic strain rate to parameterize it. And of course, you can have other internal state variables and, uh, or other variables. And I think we wrote it in the most general way before, but one of the most obvious is temperature. And temperature will usually cause softening. 